still I'm still searching for not only the not, not even the perfect performance, but it feels every time that there are new secrets to discover and you can never this is the wonderful thing about music, it's very ephemeral. You can never hold on to to something and say, Well I I achieved this today, so therefore it's there forever. Each time you start, really from, from almost from new, of course experience helps. And this is a, it's a kind of pyramid of, of experiences which, you can, which I can hold, hold and cherish and look back to and learn from. But each time I come back to the piece and I listen with a new orchestra, there are also always new faces, new energies in an orchestra. There's always a new conductor, as there is this time, who gives brand new ideas, brand new inspiration to, to each phrase, to each way of interpreting um, notes and ideas, expression markings in the score that Elgar also wrote in such detail. He wrote a lot of of markings, um, expression markings. So it's 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 endless. I always think if I'm feeling that there's nothing for me to say about the Elgar, the problem is always with me. It's never with the music. The music stands as this this ideal, really, this glowing ideal. And and um, coming coming back to it fresh now is is again very very exciting and it's a fantastic orchestra here, fantastic conductor, so that really gives me a whole new set of, of hopes and wishes and ideas. so moving about the piece is that he often begins to say something and he often write, he writes noblemente a lot, nobly or, and it's often forte or fortissimo but very quickly there are diminuendos, decrescendos he's giving up in a certain way he's holding on to something but before he can express very much he finds it dissipating away in the start of actually each movement it starts almost with the sense of of the protagonist, the main character, almost speaking a soliloquy with just very vague background and then the orchestra come in and join him for the rest of the movement and that happens for each of the four movements. But of course in the last movement the orchestra really take up and they say, no, we have a future, we have energy, we have a democracy, we have all these ideas and that's why this fourth movement I think, a little bit like Schubert in a way, suddenly he finds he's able to fly, he's able to move in a different direction. actually because we don't have as many concertos as a violinist or a pianist but somehow in a few different cases when a composer decided to write a cello concerto he decided to pour his heart out and compose one of his best works I mean the same is true of Dvorak um, and I think I think the same is in a way perhaps or that it's arguable there's Walton there's just a code which there, there are you know there are many in the 20th century It's a fantastic hall, um, and more to the point, it's a fantastic orchestra who deserve a hall like this, no question. Um, and I can feel that the hall is new, it's a little bit like play playing a hall, it's a little bit like playing an instrument, I mean, you know, it's the same kind of materials. Yeah. So, so I'm sh absolutely sure this hall is going to mature in a really beautiful way in the next decade, yeah, as well, because it, it, feels, it feels fresh, it's very alive, I can imagine the Soli will become a little bit more mellow as well.